Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture again. In the last class, we look at the work energy method and solve couple of examples. Today, we are going to see more examples on the same concept. So, the first problem statement is following. Two blocks are joined by an inextensible cable as shown. If the system is released from rest, determine the velocity of block A after it has moved 2 meter and assume that the coefficient of kinetic friction between block A and the plane is mu k equal to 0.25 and that the pulley is weightless and frictionless. So, in this question again we can use the principle of work and energy and we can apply that for both block A and block B. So, let us apply the principle of work and energy. for block A. So, we have to identify all the forces that are acting on block A. So, for that let me make the free body diagram. So, we have this plane and then we have the block. Its weight is 200 kg which is equal to 1960 Newton and uh, the tension T will be away from this block. So, let us say it is T, we have a pulley here and then we have the block B, its weight is 300 kg. So, therefore, this is equal to 2940 Newton and again the tension T will be upward. Now, because the table has friction, therefore, the frictional force will be in the opposite direction of the motion. So, it will be F equal to mu times N and N is given by the weight of this block. So, let us write down uh, the principle. So, we have T 1 plus U 1 2 equal to T 2, where T 1 is the initial kinetic energy of block A. So, T 1 is 0 plus the work done is force times the displacement F dot d L equal to final kinetic energy is half m let us say v square. Therefore, we have 0 plus the forces are T in the plus x direction and then the frictional force mu n. So, it will be minus mu is 0 0.25 into n, n is 1960 from the free body diagram into d L. d L we have been asked to find out the velocity when the block A has moved 2 meter. So, therefore, 2 equal to half m is 200 into v square. So, this I can rewrite as 2 t minus 980 equal to 100 v square 
let us call it equation number a. Now, let us apply the conservation or the principle of work energy for block B. So, again we have T 1. So, initial kinetic energy of block B is 0 plus the force that are acting on it. So, force is its weight minus the tension multiplied by the displacement equal to half m is 300 into v square. Okay. And this I can rewrite as 5880 minus 2t equal to 150 v square. And we have to find out what is the value of v. Therefore, let us add equation number 1 and 2. So, we get 4 9 double 0 equal to 250 v square and this gives you v equal to 4.43 meter per second. So, note that using the principle of work and energy very easily we were able to find out the velocity of the block. We do not need to solve the Newton equation of motion. Now, let us look at the another problem statement. A block of mass 1.6 kg is placed on a horizontal plane and attached to an ideal spring. The spring has a stiffness of k equal to 30 Newton per meter and is unstretched when x is equal to 0. The block is launched at x equal to 0 with the velocity of 6 meter per second to the right. And we have been asked to determine the value of x when the block first comes to rest. Okay. And in the second part, we have been asked to find the speed of the block when it reaches x equal to 0 for the second time. It is also given in the question statement that the static and kinetic friction of the plane is 0.3 and 0.2. So, it is given that mu s is equal to 0 0.3 and mu k is 0 0.2. So, to find out the value of x when the block comes into rest, let us use the work energy principle. And the situation is following, we have this block of mass m. And uh, it is start with a velocity of 6 meter per second. The static friction and kinetic friction are given. And then this block moves and then comes into the rest. We have to find out what is this distance. So, we have T 1 plus V 1 plus U 1 2 equal to T 2 plus V 2 
let us call it equation number 1. Now, the initial kinetic energy T1 of the block is half m v1 square. So, the mass is given it is 1.6 kg, the velocity is also given it is 6 meter per second therefore, this comes out to be 28.8 Newton. V1 is the potential energy note that there is no potential energy because at this location there is no stretch in the spring. So, therefore, V1 is equal to 0 and U12 note that it is the work done by the frictional force. So, whatever is the force except for the gravity and uh, the spring forces they comes into U12 and uh, let us find it out. So, the frictional force is going to work in the opposite direction of the motion. So, they are going to act in a minus x direction therefore, it will be minus mu k times n into x because minus mu k n is the force and then multiply by the displacement. So, this comes out to be minus 0 0.2 into n, n is the weight. So, 1.6 into 9.81 because the weight is 1.6 kg and into x this comes out to be minus 3.139 x and uh, T 2 is the final kinetic energy it comes to rest. So, therefore, T 2 will be 0 in this case V 2 will be half k x square now k is given. So, it is 15 x square let us put all this value in equation number 1. So, we have T 1 which is 28.8 plus V 1 equal to 0 minus 3.139 x equal to 0 plus 15 x square or we have 15 x square plus 3.139 x minus 28.8 equal to 0 and this gives you x equal to 1.285 and x equal to minus 1.494. Note that this value is not possible because the block is moving in the plus x direction therefore, negative value is not acceptable. So, we have x equal to 1.285. Now, let us see that for this value of x whether the block will remain in the rest or not. So, we are going to see that in this position the block will remain in rest or not. Okay. So, let us look at the spring forces for that value of x. So, the spring force is k time x k is given 30 into x we have just find out it is 1.285. Therefore, the spring force will be 38.55 Newton and it is going to act in the minus x direction and uh, what are the other forces that are acting on the block? Well, they are static friction. So, the static friction its maximum value is mu s times n the value of mu s is given it is 0 0.3 into n n is the weight which is 1.6 kg. So, therefore, 1.6 into 9.81 that comes out to be 4.709 Newton. Therefore, the frictional forces are not sufficient to overcome the spring forces therefore, after the block reaches that maximum value of x it is going to come back it is not going to stop there. Now, in the second part we have been asked to find out the speed of the block when the block reaches at x equal to 0 for the second time. So, just now we have seen that the spring forces are larger than the frictional forces therefore, the block is not going to stay over here it is going to come back 
and the question is what is the velocity at x equal to 0. So, let us again use the work energy relation. So, we have T 1 plus V 1 plus U 1 2 equal to T 2 plus V 2 and let us say this is the initial point. Therefore, the kinetic energy T 1 will be 0 because the block is at rest over here and uh, potential energy V 1 is equal to half k x square x just now we have find out it is 1.285. So, x is equal to 1.285. So, therefore, half k is known it is 30 into 1.285 square and u 1 2 is the work done by the frictional forces. So, the frictional forces are minus mu k n into the displacement x and its value we have find out in the first part minus mu k n into x it was minus 3.139 x. So, minus 3.139 into x and x is known. So, it is minus 3.139 into 1.285. Now, let us look at kinetic energy T 2. T 2 is half m v square. So, it will be half m is given 1.6 into v 2 square and the potential energy because of the spring is 0 because its natural length is when the spring is at x equal to 0. Now, let us put all these values in equation number 1. So, we have T 1 equal to 0 plus half into 30 into 1.285 square minus 3.139 into 1.285 equal to half into 1.6 into V 2 square plus 0 and from here we can rewrite it as twenty four point seven seven minus four point zero four equal to point eight v two square. This gives you v two square equal to twenty point seven three divided by point eight, which comes out to be twenty five point nine. Therefore, v two is five point zero nine meter per second. Now, let us look at another problem statement. The 3 kg slider is released from rest at position 1. and slides with negligible friction in a vertical plane along the circular rod. The attached spring has a stiffness of 350 Newton per meter and has an unstretched length of 0 0.6 meter and we have been asked to determine the velocity of the slider as it passes position 2. So, in this question again we can use the work energy equation between point 1 and point 2 to find out the velocity at 2. So, 
So, work energy equation is T 1 plus V 1 plus U 1 2 equal to T 2 plus V 2. At point A, because the mass is released from the rest, therefore, kinetic energy will be 0. Now, V 1 is the sum of the gravitational potential energy plus the spring energy. So, V 1 is m g h plus half k x 1 square, where x 1 is the extension in the spring. And uh, to find out what is m g h, we have to fix the reference axis. So, let me fix my reference over there. So, V 1 becomes m is 3, g is 9.81 into h. From the figure, you can see that h is equal to 0 0.6 plus half k, k is given, it is 350 into the extension. So, the extension is this much at point A. So, it is 0 0.6 square and uh, it comes out to be 17.66 plus 63 which is equal to 80.66 joule and u 1 2 is the work done by the other forces since the friction is not present therefore there are no other work so u 1 2 will be 0 now let us look at point 2 here t 2 is equal to half m v square or v 2 square and uh, V 2 is equal to half k x square. So, k into x square. x is the extension in the spring because this is 0 0.6, this length is also 0 0.6. Therefore, this length will be 0 0.6 square root 2 minus its natural length which is 0 0.6 whole square and m g h is 0 because our reference is over here. So, therefore, let us put everything in equation number 1. So, we have 0 plus 80.66 plus 0 equal to half into m, m is given into v 2 square plus half k into 0 0.6 square root 2 minus 0 0.6 whole square and uh, this can be rewritten as 80.66 equal to half into 3 into v2 square plus 10.81 and from here v2 comes out to be 6.32 meter per second. Now, let us look at another similar problem and the problem statement is following. A 10 kg collar slides without friction along a vertical rod as shown, the spring attached to the collar has an unstretched length of 100 mm and a spring constant of 600 Newton per meter if the collar is released from rest in position 1. determine its velocity 
after it has moved 150 mm to position 2. So, this 6 inch is given it is 150 mm and 8 inch is 200 mm. Therefore, I can find out how much is this length. So, this length will be square root 200 square plus 150 square which is equal to 250 mm. Now, let us write down the work energy equation to find out the velocity at position 2. So, we have T 1 plus V 1 plus U 1 2 equal to T 2 plus V 2 and uh, in position 1 because the collar is released from the rest therefore, V 1 will be 0 and therefore, T 1 will also be 0 because it is kinetic energy and V 1 is the potential energy which is equal to the gravitational energy plus the spring energy that we have. So, to write down the value of m g h I have to fix the reference. So, let me fix my reference over here. So, m is given it is 10 into g is 9.81 into h is 150 mm let me convert it in meter. So, 0.15 this is the gravitational energy plus half k is given into x, x is the extension in the spring from its natural length and uh, its natural length is 100 mm and in position A the total length of the spring becomes 200 mm therefore, the extension is 100 mm. So, it is 0.1 square. So, let us simplify it, it is 14.715 plus 3 equal to 17.715 zoom. And again because the frictional forces were not there therefore, u 1 2 will be equal to 0. Now, let us analyze position 2 at 2 we have the kinetic energy equal to half m v 2 square which is equal to half into 10 into v 2 square equal to 5 v 2 square and uh, v 2 there is no m g h plus half k into x 2 square. Now, let us look at how much is x 2, x 2 will be 250 minus the natural length which is 100. So, this is 150 mm therefore, v 2 becomes 0 plus half into k is 600 into 0 0.15 square and this comes out to be 6.75 joule. Let us put everything in equation number 1. So, we have 0 plus 17.715 plus 0 equal to 5 v 2 square plus 6.75. This gives you v 2 equal to plus minus 1.481 meter per second and therefore, v 2 will be equal to 1.481 meter per second downward because the collar is moving down. Now, let us look at one more problem on the same concept and the problem statement is following. A satellite is launched from an altitude of 500 kilometer in a direction parallel to the surface of the earth with a velocity of 36,900 kilometer per hour. Determine the maximum altitude
reached by the satellite. Okay. So, we have the following situation, we have this orbit of the satellite, we have the earth, its center is let us say O, its radius is capital R. Then the satellite is launched from point A, its velocity is V A and uh, at point B, let us say its velocity is V B, then we have been asked what is this distance, its maximum altitude from the surface of the earth. Let us say the distance of point A is R A from the center of the earth and the distance of point B is R B. To find out the maximum altitude, let us first find out what is V B and for that I can use the angular momentum conservation. So, at point A, the angular momentum is m into V A R A, at point B, it is m V B R B, m will get cancelled. So, therefore, V B equal to R A V A divided by R B. Let us call it equation number 1. Now, I can use the work energy relation between point A and B. So, we have T 1 plus V 1 equal to T 2 plus V 2. At point A, the kinetic energy is half m V A square, the potential energy is minus G m m over R A equal to at point B, I have half m V B square plus minus G m m over R B. Now, the value of V B I can put from equation number 1. So, let us use equation number 1, then I can rewrite the above expression as half m V A square minus half m R A square V A square over R B square equal to G m m 1 over R A minus 1 over R B. And this I can rewrite as so, m will get cancelled, we have half V A square 1 minus R A square over R B square equal to G m over R A 1 minus R A over R B and over here I can use the expression of A square minus B square which is equal to A plus B into A minus B. So, therefore, I have half V A square into 1 plus R A over R B and 1 minus R A over R B equal to G M over R A 1 minus R A over R B and 1 minus R A over R B will get cancelled with this 1 minus R A over R B. Therefore, I have 1 plus R A over R B equal to 2 G M over R A V A square. Let us call it equation number 2. Now, all the values are given in the question. So, R A is this distance plus the radius of the earth capital R and this is given it is 500 kilometer. Therefore, R A is equal to the radius of the earth plus 500 kilometer. So, that comes out to be 6870 kilometer which is equal to 6.87 into 10 to the power 6 meter. R B is unknown and uh, capital Z M is equal to a small g R square where R is the radius of the earth. So, that becomes 9.81 into 
6.37 into 10 to the power 6 square. So, that comes out to be 3.98 into 10 to the power 14 meter cube over second square and uh, V A is given it is 36,900 kilometer per hour which we can convert in meter per second. So, this is 36900 into 1000 divided by 3600 that comes out to be 10.25 into 10 to the power 3 meter per second. Let us put everything in equation number 2. So, we get R B equal to 66.8 into 10 to the power 6 meter. But in the question, we have been asked the maximum altitude. So, the maximum altitude is R B minus the radius of the earth. So, therefore, the maximum altitude will be 66.8 into 10 to the power 6 minus the radius of the earth which is 6.37 into 10 to the power 6 and that comes out to be 60.4 into 10 to the power 6 meter or 60,400 kilometer. With this, let me stop here. See you in the next class. Thank you.